Hello and welcome to our latest virtual bridge session. And I'm delighted to be joined by Karen Shackland here, who I'm, I'm kind of hoping has all the answers to this, this thorny question. Um, she's told me that she hasn't, but I think she's just holding out. You know, she's, she's just going to come loose at the end of the session with this, and here's the silver bullet. <laughs> but it is about that issue, about encouraging more women into the tech area. Currently in the UK, we're about 23% of the workforce is, is female. Um, and, th and that's only recently approved over the last few years from, from a standard level of around 17%. And, and I have to say, it's, it's something that I'm more interested now, in all honesty, just since, since I have two daughters. Um, I, I could say previously to this, it's not a topic that I would have spent much time thinking about. Um, and it, equally, when I was at school, um, the girls were smarter than the boys in the school, so <laughs> I thought they had it all sorted <laughs> academically. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested, Karen, tell us what you can do for us in, in, in this world of, of gender balance. Super, well, thanks very much, Kenji. Um, I, I am just going to reiterate, I, this is not about the answers today. Um, okay, so I am, I hope, sharing my screen. So you should be able to see my slides now. Yeah, cool, good. Always worth checking. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, my problem with this is really um, that we have been doing many things for a long time. And although, as Kenji said, things have been improving a bit, um, they're not improving very fast. So um, just to uh, reiterate those statistics. So if we look at, for example, um, females in maths and computer science courses um, in colleges and universities in Scotland. Uh, these are the figures um, 2015 to 2018. Um, and I mean, basically the take home message is here, um, the applicants are hovering around 21, 22%. Um, the acceptances are hovering around 19, 20%. Um, and the offers, offers are have, hovering around the same sorts of levels. So um, it's, it's still too low. Um, I, I kind of think that everybody here probably has, uh, you're already switched on to the idea that having more women in tech is a good thing. Um, but just to uh, say a bit more about that, um, you know, if we believe that men and women are equally good at things, right, not just tech, all things, then we should have equal numbers of men and women, broadly speaking, in all of our subjects, right? So this is a problem for tech, it's a problem for um, nursing and social sciences, um, uh, it's a problem for economics. So it's not just a problem for us, um, but it is a bigger problem for us, I think, because the disparity between the numbers of men and women in computing is quite large. Um, so, okay, why, why does it matter? Um, we actually think that uh, the um, gender balance in a team makes for better solutions. Right? And so we've seen a lot of um, things in the news where um, you know, a, a tech team has developed something and it might not be um, uh, that they've developed it and their team is not very diverse. And therefore, when it comes out to um, the wider world, then that's when all the problems are uncovered. So we could talk about, for example, the fact that Amazon had a CV screening service, um, which figured out that Amazon don't employ women and therefore started rejecting CVs just because people were involved in things like women's football teams and stuff like that. Um, because the data was biased, right? So it was, it was a machine learning algorithm. It was fed biased data. They didn't notice that the data was biased because they didn't think about it. Um, and therefore it came out as a, a biased algorithm. Um, things like Apple Health um, didn't uh, originally involve anything to do with um, issues specifically related to women's health. Um, uh, and you know, we could talk about things like uh, more generally that heart attacks um, have different symptoms in men and women. And so therefore, if you have a health app that tells you these are the symptoms of a heart attack, um, but you're a woman and your symptoms are not like that, but you are having a heart attack, then that's a bad thing. Um, and of course, there's a, there's a racial element as well that, um, so there was the uh, US passport service um, facial recognition that didn't do well with skin tones other than white. 
um, because it hadn't been tested on those other skin tones. So the argument is, if we have more diverse teams, um, then more of those problems we picked up in the development stages. Um, and uh, there's been a nice report, um, I think it's a McKinsey report, that shows that uh, companies who have more diverse teams are more profitable. So good news all around, aside from the moral element of, um, well, why are we excluding part of the population from our courses, even though that exclusion is um, not intentional? Um, and uh, how do we expect to build good computer systems when we um, are not using the best of all the talents, right? So um, if we've got roughly an 80-20 split, um, then uh, you know, for every 100 people who work in tech, we've got 80 men, 20 women. Um, if that should really be 50-50, then we're missing out on 30 good women and we've also got 30 men who are not as good as those, uh, the other men in that group or as those missing women would be, right? So we, we've got the wrong people in the group. Okay, so I think you all know that. Um, we've done lots of things to try and improve these numbers though, because we've been saying for a while, we need more women in tech. So um, I've just put some things here uh, that we have been doing, um, I'm sure, you've got lots of other activities that you've been engaged in as well to try and ensure that more women come into your subject. And the fact that the numbers are going up slightly um, indicates that that is doing something, probably. Um, it's, it's not really clear that it's doing a lot. I mean, maybe it's halting a much worse decline. That is a possible. Um, but given that we're putting a lot of effort into this, why are we not getting more women into computing straight away. So my problem here is that um, we don't really know. We don't really know what things work, how they work, what are the conditions um, that have to happen around about the particular venues for it to work. So um, let's imagine this scenario. Okay, so I've got Shelley. Um, Shelley is female um, and she's eight and she's at primary school in Stirlingshire. Um, she wants to be a doctor, right? Because lots of kids want to be doctors when they're eight. Um, she has got a female teacher who's very enthusiastic about computers in the classroom um, and tells them uh, a lot about how great computers are. Um, the university uh, at Stirling sends a mixed group of research students, so uh, both male and female um, and other non-binary people as well, if you like. Um, to the school to demonstrate how technology can be used to provide better healthcare. So it's just a one-off uh, visit. And that really made an impact on Shelley and she thought it was terrific. Um, then the years roll by, um, there are all sorts of influences on Shelley, clearly. Um, her parents might be influencing her choices, her social group. For example, she watches TV um, and uh, she likes a particular American show that has got a lot of boys who do tech and the girls who are basically cheerleaders. Um, so that's a bit of a downer. Um, she does go to a girls only coding club run by Fourth Valley College. Um, and she really enjoys that coding club. Um, and then when Shelley is 17, she applies to bioengineering at York, right? And so my difficulty here is that, um, it, of course she'll have had lots of influences on her. Um, we don't know what influences really had an impact on her. I mean, it could be that all of those things affected her choice of doing bioengineering. That is certainly true, but certainly um, the sorts of things that we're uh, all doing now in our individual departments is to say, okay, well, what activities are we doing and how does this change our numbers? And clearly, if I do some outreach at Stirling, the children that we talk to might not go into do computing at all, or they might go and do computing at a different university. So I never know how that research, um, how that activity has had an impact on them. Um, so the problem is I can't really work out anything about how, what my department does um, has an effect um, on the, the bigger picture of uh, women in computing science or in tech related subjects more generally. And of course, Shelley could have done all sorts of things, right? So she could have gone to another 
uh, university in Scotland, another college in Scotland. She could have gone for an apprenticeship training. Um, she might not have gone to university for a few years and she'd come back later, you know, all of those things. So my trouble is really that we don't have the evidence to, to really firmly back up what things work. Because I'm sure we all know we've done these sorts of things. It takes effort to send groups to schools. It takes effort to run coding clubs. Um, and we'd rather put the effort in the things that we know are going to make a difference um, rather than this kind of, um, I was going to say, scattergun approach um, that we're doing in this vacuum of evidence. So um, if we were uh, had all the resources in the world, we'd have a longitudinal study. We will look at um, children across the country. We'd um, take all their influences. We'd look at all of the data of the uh, part, um, apprenticeship training, the colleges, university courses all together. We don't have that. So um, to make a step towards having that, I mean, fundamentally, I think we all need to work together on this. And especially now that we're all online, um, it's really easy for us all to share the sorts of outreach activities that we do um, and we should be able to get more benefit out of those um, and you know we're not really in competition um, with each other we should all be working together to get more of the underrepresented groups into our subjects and if we did work together then hopefully we would be able to target things more effectively um, and also it should take less effort right because um, if you can reuse a video that I've made and I can reuse some materials that you've prepared for a code club, then um, that should be a gain for us all. So um, I'm leading some research uh, based at the University of Stirling to look at how do we get some evidence for these sorts of activities. Um, we're pulling down the scope because we can't look at everything. Um, and we're going to look at role model initiatives only. Um, and we're asking the questions, uh, what initiatives are there that are focused around role models? And I'll say that a bit more about what that means in a minute. Um, how do we know what good outcomes are? Um, uh, and how do we even measure those things? Um, because the most obvious outcome we have is the numbers of applicants to universities, and that's not changing much. Um, and if we draw together that wide body of evidence, can we make some inferences about um, what is working in particular situations? Because it could be that the thing that really influenced Shelley was that um, she has uh, an aunt that does bioengineering, right? Or it could be that um, lots of her friends are doing something similar. Um, and maybe it's, it's nothing to do with the outreach activities that we've been engaged in. OK, so how do we pick out some of that sort of thing? Um, we've got a group that uh, draws uh, computer scientists and um, also social scientists together to, to look at this research. So uh, Camilla is a social scientist. Um, and then there's me, uh, Sally Smith and Ella Taylor Smith, who are both at Edinburgh Napier University um, and work a lot in gender and education in computing. Um, and we're also collaborating with uh, Ada Scotland. I don't know if any of you took part in the Ada Scotland Festival that happened last October. Um, so Matt Barr from the University of Glasgow ran that activity with Ella. Um, and so uh, that has already got some sort of community links across um, the Scottish educational landscape. Okay, so what is a role model? Um, we're taking a broad view. Um, so basically we're saying, uh, this is our formal definition. Um, that we've got from uh, the literature. Um, role models present representations of possible selves and possible future selves. Um, and so traditionally we think about the photography that we use in our marketing, marketing materials. Do we have women in those subjects represented? Um, uh, do we have women going out into uh, outreach activities. Actually, is it women we need in those outreach activities or is it men? Uh, that's the other thing that we don't really know. Um, so, but we usually think about having women who are leading these things so that young women can see other women doing the things. I think that's for me. 
Um, and uh, we have awards and events um, and celebrations of women in STEM um, and a lot of raising awareness. So the publication of um, you know, press stories about women's research and, and that sort of thing. So there are a lot of different ways that we look at role models. And um, when I finish, I'll ask you for questions about, you know, what sort of activities you might think about for role models. Um, OK, so why am I telling you all this and not telling you the answers? Because I don't know the answers. So we need your help. Um, we're going to have two evidence gathering initiatives. One is um, we're going to gather as much information as we can about the sorts of activities that people are doing across Scotland and have been doing. So we're going to have an edit-a-thon um, to populate a database of evidence. The idea is that that will be part of our research, but it will also create a good practice guide in future. So what you get out of participating in this is um, if you share your activities, we'll share our activities and hopefully we'll all benefit from shared materials. Um, I, but at the very least, you know, sharing data about those materials might help figure out what it is that's really um, working in those. Um, one of the questions we've got in our editathon is, uh, is it's basically we're going to have a, a portal to a database which will ask a number of questions. So it's kind of like a survey. Um, and one of the questions will be, what kind of um, outcomes did you measure from this? Uh, and in general, I mean, I don't know about you, maybe we're a bit slack. We don't really measure much. We maybe ask the participants if they enjoyed that day, um, you know, and we have figures about how many people participated, but we certainly don't follow them up in 10 years time to find out if they chose to come to the University of Stirling. Um, so we know that that data will be limited. Um, so we're also looking at a student survey to look at women who are currently in various forms of technology training to ask them what influenced them to study tech. And we're specifically going to ask them questions about role model type activities um, or relationships. Um, so we'll try and get some um, post hoc data out of the, the students. Um, so the idea is we'll be doing that from mid-February onwards um, and reporting our details, uh, you know, the, our outcomes in April. Um, the more people we have contributing to these surveys, the better. Um, and certainly we want to have a diverse community. So obviously the people that are in the project are from universities. Um, so we feel that we've got the university angle reasonably well covered. Um, we definitely need to have more people from colleges taking part because um, colleges are also engaged in those sorts of outreach activities to different uh, groups of individuals really. Um, and some of those people um, may will go on to take careers, may go to university um, as well. So there's a, uh, obviously a connection between those. And of course, we've got um, apprenticeship training as well. Um, uh, there are a lot of other kinds of training for tech um, that we're probably not going to include in there. So we're restricting our focus to uh, apprenticeships, colleges, universities, um, just because, yeah, we can't do everything in this short time scale. Okay, I'm going to say, Thank you very much for listening at this point. Um, and I'm going to ask for your feedback. Um, I'd love to know more about what you think about role model activities, what you think is working um, in your own institutions um, and if there's anything that we need to do um, to uh, add to our surveys. Thanks for that, Karen. Um, we do have um, about eight or nine minutes left for a bit of discussion. Um, I, I'd just like to start off by asking, when you're looking for, for data and examples of, of work that's been carried out in this area, are you limiting yourself to Scotland or would you welcome input from, from other parts of the UK and wider? Um, we are limiting ourselves to Scotland at the moment. Um, I think because 
we want this to be a Scottish resource of good practice. And obviously there's lots of practice everywhere else. Um, uh, in an ideal world, if I had a year to do this project and more resource, then sure, we would absolutely look elsewhere. Um, but I think in the short time scale, we're going to look mainly at Scotland um, and maybe look at um, some desk based studies to to get some good practice, because um, we'll, we'll have a good practice guide in the report as well. So we, we might take some examples from elsewhere. But in order to get the evidence, we're really focusing on Scotland. OK. Scottish um, colleges and universities uh, and other training providers, people who yes. offer apprenticeships. Yes. So just. The, the wider base and and generally you, you're considering a 16 plus audience yes okay absolutely okay. Yeah. right <laughs> just to make it clear for people yeah, who might be good. watching yeah, yeah. The, the, the recording and um c can you give me just an estimate of um the survey or or the editor thon editor thon yes edit -thon? we were thinking about it you know like wikipedia has these days where um, everybody gets stuck in and adds uh, a lot of entries about particular um, subjects, typically about women in a particular subject. So we were thinking about that sort of angle, but it is basically a survey. Okay. <laughs> but we thought that it would be nice to have that kind of community to say, we're all doing this right now together today, you know, or over a, a, a short time frame so that um, we can ask each other questions and, you know, create a bit of a buzz about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> and how, how, how long will it take me to fill out the survey? I, I'm, I'm quite a lazy person at heart, so I, I, I like yeah, to have these things head up. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, hands up. It probably will take a good half hour okay. to okay. fill out the survey, maybe an hour. I, I, um, I think that that's good because it means that you're collecting, you know, a reasonable amount of data that you can share afterwards. So, yeah. you know, yeah. That's, that's I think so. Um, I mean, we have got a lot of questions. If you don't have the answers, that's okay, because even partial data would be helpful. So we've deliberately put a lot of different questions in there to ask about the, the, the different elements of the activity, who took part, you know, who were the participants, but who were the people who delivered? Um, were there any particular characteristics of those people? Because, you know, is this about class or you know, social demographics? Is it about rural versus urban? Is it about men and women? Is it because your mum, dad works in IT? You know, uh, so we're trying to kind of pull out as many things as possible that would say, what are the possible influences of uh, your environment? It's, it, it's interesting because I've never heard that about studying the makeup of the current cohort of students who are in computing who are female. If, if there are some common elements to those students as to why they joined, perhaps from, from a, a sense of demographics or, or, or locality or, or class, as you say. Yeah. Um, just, so just to open up, I suppose we, we have a few college members here to, joining us here today. Paul. Is, is there anything happening in the UHI in this area? Do you know of any examples here? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I take uh, uh, several classes and I'm, I'm primarily digital media. So interactive digital media, working websites, um, all sorts. But uh, this year I've taken on a MPA games, computer games development course. Okay. And I thought, I thought, fantastic. Um, and talking about this uh, and, and diversity and with men and women, um, I thought all teenagers seem to play games, every single one of them, with a section of maybe one or two. Yeah. And I think the split um, is about 50-50. So 50% are, are girls or 50% are boys. They're all playing them. However, when it comes to games development, the last two classes I've had has always been 80% mm -hmm. boys walking in the class and, and only a few. It's only been a couple of girls. And it's uh, I could never put my finger on why that this is everybody's playing them and the last time I checked I've got a mum I've got a wife and I've got a daughter and they're all smarter than me so um, I'm wondering why they're not part of this fantastic um, when I checked with with a colleague um, the games industry is a multi-billion pound industry it's worth more than the movie and the music industry combined so I, I'm, I'm shocked to see why there's not more very smart young ladies uh, coming mm -hmm. into this um, this industry because I'm pretty sure um, as was pointed out, a bit of diversity creates usually the best ideas and the best games. Uh, it's a very mm -hmm. specific part of the, the sector, but I would love to see uh, a, a bit more uh, equal terms so we get a bit more ideas around the table. Um, 
but again, it's not a solution. That's that's an issue I've seen. I've not, I've not got a solution for it though. I, yeah. I don't know if it comes from how they're how everybody's brought up, and by the time they get to to that point, they're they're looking at the games industry as a, uh, for lack of a better word, a boys' club. I don't know. Well, do, do you know if there's anything the UHI does in the promotion of of your course? Um, well, yeah, I've. Yeah, I managed to get in touch with, I thought of a way of, of trying to get um, some way to balance this. And I, I managed to get into um, something called the Video Games Ambassadors. And what they do is they've got mentors or ambassadors that come around and they're industry professionals. Uh, and they, they come around and give a class talk or do whatever. And it was my, my pleasure to meet uh, a person called Teresa Wright. And she is a a senior producer at Netspeak Games. She's also part of STEM. Um, she is part of Limit Break Mentor, and she's obviously a, a video game ambassador. And she um, is a champion trying to get that diversity, the, the, not just for men and women, but um, uh, gender minorities, all sorts, into the, the video games industry. So I got um, Teresa come along to talk to the class and. Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but I was impressed. A very interesting career, uh, fantastic things to talk about. And she's one of the ones that gave me all the information about this. So mm -hmm. um, it gave me hope that maybe my daughter one day will be able to pick a career and that her gender won't come into it. So it was really nice to speak to a very, very um, knowledgeable person about the whole subject. Excellent, Paul. We, you'll have to get her into your, your um, the recruitment literature for the college <laughs> for your course. That's 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 the way to go. <laughs> um, I, I see Aileen has um, put a comment into into chat there. Aileen, uh, you work for Equate Scotland. Um, would you like to share? Um, Hi there. You... Um, I'm not putting on my video because my washing's right behind me. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to say hello to everyone. I just got an email about this call like 20 minutes ago, so I thought I'd jump on. Um, and hear about this research. So Equate Scotland support women in science, technology and engineering. And we work across uh, um, colleges, universities, but also women once they're in the sector. And I just think that this is a really great piece of research. So we can um, help promote this um, in, to our students um, that we work with across Scotland and um, in colleges as well, if that's um, something that you're interested in. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. We do quite a lot of, oh, we do do outreach. That's what we're we're here to do. So we do a lot of um, women only events, um, ex exper experiential learning events for students as well. So um, giving them a, a bit more of hands on um, experience of what it's like to work in a specific sector, like in construction or in data science. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got lots of examples around that and around role models. So hopefully we'll be able to input into that. Um, so, so yeah, I just wanted to say, like, we're here to help and uh, this looks really good and I'm really excited to hear what the, like, the research says at the end of it. So, yeah. Thanks, Aileen. Um, I should also say, um, Kenji, you asked about how long the survey would take to fill in. Um, the student survey is much shorter. So that's 10, 15 minutes, um, I would say. So uh, yeah, we're, we're not asking quite so much of our students. Okay. Just asking a lot of our colleagues <laughs> when we're all pretty busy. But for the greater good, everybody. It is, it is. So um, just for the recorded part of the session, that brings us to the end. Is there a final note you'd like to to push out there, Karen, to all those people listening, looking to, to join in, how, how are they going to get in touch? How are they going to find out more about the work that's going on? Good question. Um, don't really know yet. Um, so uh, we'll be sending out information about the Editathon and the portal for um, that and also the survey for students um, later this month okay so um, I'll, I'll i'll add a link to the the, the description so if you're watching this as a recording it's in the description below we'll, we'll add some information i'll get that from karen later on yeah. so karen <laughs> and everyone joining us here today thank you very much for your time and for those of you watching the session thank you very much hope you have time to um perhaps join us for a live session in the future but until then stay safe <laughs>